What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Carl and I hope you have a wonderful day. On today's video, I'll be talking about my trading routine. I will tell you everything I do. I will show you the tool that I use. I will show you the different type of trading, what crypto I prefer to trade. We'll talk a little bit about risk management and I will also do a live trade so you can better understand everything that I show you. So let's go to my computer so I can show you exactly what I mean. All right. Now, this is the my most favorite thing about crypto. It's what I'm about to show you. I love to do trading. It's a good way for me to make a little bit extra money and it, it, I just love um, to do it. So usually there's two tools that I use when I'm trading. First one is what we call TradingView. So the website is tradingview.com. I'll put the link in the description if you uh, decide to create your account. It's totally free, but they do have paid version if you decide to get a, a paid version later down the road. Uh, you'll get a rebate by using my link. So I use TradingView to look at the price action and to see where the price are going. And the second tool, well, it's pretty important. It's your trading platform that you'll be using to buy and sell your crypto. Uh, so for this example, today I'll be using a Binance, but it doesn't really matter which platform you're using. All the terminology, the menu are very similar. So when you're trading, there's two kinds of trading. There's spot trading, which means you buy a coin and you sell it to make a profit. The only disadvantage with this is if the market go down, there's no way for you to make a profit. You need to wait for the market to start going back up again and to enter your trade and then sell it again at a profit. Second option is by using futures. This is what I do most of the time. So by using futures, you can enter a trade when it's trending up and you can also enter a trade when the market is going down. Um, and on top of that, you can also add some leverage. So if you want to multiply your gain, but we have to be very careful about this. I will show you a little bit later, but you can create leverage to increase your gain. So that's why I always use futures to do my trade because sometimes there's very good opportunities on the way up or on the way down. So it's always a good way to make profit no matter what the market is doing right now. So today I'll make a real example. I will show you how I enter my trade, how I choose my coin. And I will try, depending on the market, uh, how it's looking this morning, I'll try to see if there's a live uh, trade that I can take. And I will show you exactly how I take my profit. And I will give you a very interesting strategy that you can start using if you want uh, today. Most of the time, I do swing trade. What I mean by swing trade is that usually I will enter a position and I can keep my position open for quite a long time. It could, base, it could be for multiple hours or it could be for days or even sometime it could be for over a week. So usually I'll trade on the higher time frame, so one hour and up. But on today's video, I will show you what I do sometime when the market is pretty much boring or there's not too much happening on the longer period. I'll do a little bit what we call day trading. So I'll enter a position and close it on the same day. So usually my position will stay maybe a few minutes, a few hours and I'll be able to make a little bit of profit out of this. And I'll show you one of the strategy that I use for this that has been working pretty good for me. So let me go onto the computer and I will show you exactly how it's done. All right. So let's me, let me log on to my account. All right. So, all right, so when I do future trading, I go right here to derivative and I'll go to uh, USD and futures. Okay, so how much I have? Uh, okay, I only have $28 in that account, but that's more than enough to do my uh, example. Um, perfect. So now I'm ready. If you don't know um, how futures account work or futures on let's say Binance, 
I'll put the link of a video right here on the top right so you can have access and you'll uh, I'll go in detail explaining uh, how it works uh, with uh, Binance futures but like I said the example is done with Binance but it's pretty much the same across all the different uh, platform so now that I'm ready with my uh, Binance account let's go back to my trading view so what kind of coin that I usually trade there's not too many that I use for uh, trading um, you see the one I have I mostly use are the one right here so I'll trade BNB which is the Binance coin BTC Bitcoin dot which is polka dot ethereum and atom that's about the only five um, that i'll trade most of the time maybe once in a while i'll look at different coin but i try to stick with all the same one at the same time and usually when i open a position i'll open maybe one two or maybe three position at a time but usually i'll stick with one or two position at the time let me show you if i want to do like a quick profit so we need two indicator uh, for the strategy first one we're gonna have to go to right here indicator and the one that we'll be using it's called parabolic sar in bracket with algorithm and alert that's the one i really like so i'll click on it it will show up right here on top and the other one it's for ema this one right here so just click on it it will pop up right here also on the top so the only thing we need to change is we need to go to the four ema setting we go here and put we're gonna use only three uh, ema for this setup so it doesn't matter where they are in the list as long you have one that says 21 50 and 200 so i need my 21 ema my 50 ema and my 200 ema and for this example i don't need uh, this one right here so when i go to style i'll just disable this one you can put the color you want you can even change uh, if you want to, uh, the thickness of your line uh, but that's your personal preference now that's when it's done i can activate this so i have my three ema second one is the sar sar there's nothing to change nothing to add or whatsoever we can leave it just default as the way it is usually when i trade there's a couple things that i look at so let's say i'm looking to trade the bnb for this example so usually before I start to do any kind of trading, I'll just disable my indicator and I'll go usually to, uh, to a higher time frame and I'll look for any obvious support and resistance. Oh, I, al I already did them right here. So as you can see, I have yellow line right here. So all I do, I go here, I select my horizontal line and then I look for any major support of resistance. What I need is but when the price touch this area, it will react and reverse. So we can see right now there's a few touch points right here and also right here at the bottom uh, for a support. And if we look right here, this one right here act as support also. And I have my all time high right here for this period only uh, right here at the top. And then usually I'll go down to the one hour and I'll look to see if I need, if I see uh, other support and resistance. Um, so maybe, yeah, there would be one right here, as you can see, if I do this like this. So it act as support right here and then resistance over here and then support again over here. Now I go down to my 15 minute chart let's activate my two indicator there we go now here's the deal to enter a trade we have two options we can enter a long position so when the market is on the uptrend or we can enter a short position when the market is on a downtrend so to find out if we are on the downtrend on the uptrend well we just need to look at the uh, 200 EMA right here so if the price is above the 200 EMA on the longer period the price is on the uptrend 
if we look at the two other lines so I have my 21 and the 50 so if 21 is um, above the 50 and if the 50 is above the 200 on the shorter period we are on the uptrend so we know the price is going up so we need to make sure that those three lines are uh, aligned in that direction when it's done we know that we can take long position so we know we get we can go on the way up so to enter the position or to to get the signal that we need to enter the position we need to wait to see a green arrow like this from the SAR so when this happens so let's say in this example we are in an uptrend I have my green my red and my white it's telling me on an uptrend I have and by the way you can use it on the 5 minute or the 15 minute so right now I'm on the 15 minute but you can also use it on the uh, 5 minutes so by looking at this I have my green uh, arrow showing up right here now the rule is you don't enter as soon as it's showing up you need to wait at least on the second dot after the arrow so in this point as you can see we have an arrow a, a dot right here and another dot so the second dot we need to look if the candle is red or green if the candle is red like in this case we don't take the trade we just wait and usually we wait for the second candle after so if we see the second candle after is it has like a, a body and it's green it would be okay like in this case um, that's not a good uh, all a good indicator what we need is we need like a candle like this a full body candle so we have to wait now we got red red so this is not good and after a while probably like after five or six um, dot if you're not able to enter a position just forget about this trade probably um, it will reverse so let's wait for the next signal so we have a signal right here green so we need to wait for the second dot right here and look to see if it's green so we have a green body right here so which would be a good uh, position that we could enter so what I would do I would do a long second candle uh, I mean second dot right here at the top my stop loss would be just below the previous low or where is your uh, green dot and I would go 1.3 uh, risk ratio so if you look right here in the middle risk reward ratio 1.3 so I would move this thing right here until I get to 1.3 so in that case my stop loss would be a 1.43 percent and my gain uh, if it closed it would be a 1.86 well we can see that this trade closed perfectly so that would be 1.86 percent let's do another example we have another one right here we wait on the second candle it's red we need to wait again this one is red and the fourth one that one is green and it's a big one so that would be good right here at the top stop loss just right here close to the arrow or to the lowest part where it was uh, before right here and I would go 1.30 1.3% and that would be another win we have one right here so second one is red I wait and I have this one right here um, so that's a green one but the thing I forgot to mention is now the price is between my EMA so you should never take a trade when the price action is between any of the EMA so right now at this point we're not necessarily on a uptrend because now the price is moving down below my EMA 20 so we need to wait for the price to go back up or to move below my EMA 200 so this is not good so this is basically ranging this is not good and now at this point we are on a downtrend so if we look right now the price is below my EMA 200 and now the color has reverses 
So I could take a trade right here. So when we take a short, it's the opposite. I need to wait for the second dot right here and make sure that it's a red candle. If it is, I would enter my short position right here at the bottom of the second candle. My stop loss would be right here. See, on, the, and on that case, I wouldn't necessarily bring my stop loss right here, which you could. Um, but let's say if I do this, 1.3. See, now we know where the price is going, but let's say we don't know the price where it's going. I have a support line right here. So there's a good chance if the price goes down and get close to this line, it might uh, reverse. So that's why at this point, if my stop loss is right here at the top of this candle, well, probably I would just go a little bit below. Uh, let's say something like this. Usually I'll try to have at least a risk reward ratio to one. Um, so for this, I have 1.88 uh, stop loss. And if I win, I'll get 1.98%. So you're always trying to at least have the same thing or winning a little bit more to compensate for the loss. So I know I have a, a support line right here and there's a good chance that the price would reverse. So that's why usually I won't go below it. I'll try to stay above it a little bit. So at least I can make a little bit of still make profit. So in that case, it would be profitable. And as you can see, the wick just touch right here, my uh, support line, and then it start moving the other way again. All right, so let's see if we can find any real-time example, any uh, test I could do so I can show you how I do them. So as we can see right now at this moment for BNB, we are in a downtrend and I have a buy signal right here, which is not good at all. It's completely the opposite. I would have to, I would need a sell signal here to enter a position. Let's look at BTC. BTC right here, the price is between my EMA. This is not good dot we are in a downtrend but my SAR it's telling me uh, it's going up right here so it's not good ethereum see ethereum that would probably be a good opportunity right here so we are in a downtrend right here actually i don't i i should do my support and resistance for ethereum so we have a better so we can take better decisions. So let's see on the four hour where would be my support and resistance. So I have one right here, as you can see, resistance here, support, support a little bit, resistance, and then it moved through. And do we see any more? Maybe right here. Touch multiple time. And let's go down to the one hour. Do we see anything obvious? Actually, yep, right here. As we can see, there's a lot of price reversal right here. And as we can see, the price is currently sitting on a resistance. Uh, not resistant, but support. So let's go back to the 15 minutes and see what it looked like. Now, as we can see, it's not necessarily a good idea to enter position right now with Ethereum. Even though I'm going on the downtrend, when I look at the EMA, I have the sell signal right here. I still need to wait for another candle um, to confirm because I only have one dot right here. So I need to wait another uh, maybe 15 minutes but at this point we're sitting right here on the support line so I would need to see a reversal which wouldn't be good for this trade or I would need to see the price going through it 
and staying below it. So at this point, I would have to wait to see what is uh, going on uh, with this. So let's wait a little bit and we'll come back. When you're trading with leverage, just be careful. Um, so if you're just a beginner, if you're just starting out, I would really recommend you try to maybe going at two or three X maximum. So at least if the, mar the price is not going in your favor, well, you're not losing too much money because let me show you an example. So let's say right now I only have $30. Usually what I do, I never take more than 10% of all my available balance. So in that case, it wouldn't necessarily make any sense. I only have $30, so that would be $3 to enter my position. I won't do that. So for, for this example, I'll go, let's say, at $15 about. So as you can see, my cost is $15. But because I'm using 3x leverage, the buy itself would be equivalent to $45. So I would just enter my position. I look at Ethereum, it would be a long. I go here, I click on buy slash long. It will show up right here at the bottom. And then from there, I can set up right away to sell at a specific price. So my price would be at $3,619. And I would set up my stop loss at $3,518. I set it up, I leave it there, and I don't touch it. I just wait. I can go away, do something else, and I don't have to look at the chart. I just need to wait to see if the price will um, will close at a win or a loss. For this example, it would be a win, barely a win. But still, if it would, it would just go back right here. If you can, as you can see. So if the, let's say I would put this a little bit higher, well, it would come back my stop loss still below and then we'll just shoot up and still in profit but anyway usually i always try to be at maximum 1.3 percent so i make sure that i'm in profit so let's go back to ethereum see how it's going right here so it's looking good it is looking good so i'll pause the video i'll wait there's another 10 minutes and i'll be back all right, so I'm back. So it doesn't look like uh, I'll be able to enter that trade. Um, so on my second dot, um, there was a big wick. It's coming back up. And now the third one is green. And I can see there's a lot of support right here. So uh, while I'm recording this video, I think this one won't be a good idea. But I still want to do just an example quickly. Um, so let me see if I could. Okay. I'll just enter a trade very quickly on Binance right here. I won't keep that trade because I don't think I'll be, uh, well, that's that's a little bit risky. But let's say I would like to take a, a long position on this right here, right now, right here. And I'll put my stop loss right here and 1.3%. So why I put my stop loss right here? As you can see, previous all the previous candle, the lowest it went, it was there. So I'll just put my stop loss a little bit below right here so I come here um, this is BNB let's go to uh, BNB let's say for this example I'll go with 50% don't do that but it's just because I only have $28 and I'll click on I'll click market and then I click buy order submitted and now as you can see my order is submitted on 10x leverage uh, personally, that's what I do. Usually I'll trade between 10 and 15 X leverage. Um, but it's because I'm, I'm a little bit more experienced. Uh, but like I said, I don't recommend that. Uh, if you're just starting out, try to be at the lowest you can maybe one, two or three X at the most. All right. So my position is open. So I have to set up my stop loss and my target profit right away. So my stop loss would be at 409 so I would go right here click that little pencil stop loss 409 and I click some confirm so as you can see if I get stopped out my loss would be by one dollar and nine cents so I click confirm so we can see right now on the chart 
I have my stop loss right here. If you don't see this, just make sure you're using the trade trading view uh, right here chart, not the original. And then my profit would be at 416.60. I go here and then I'll force I'll sell at 416.60. 100% of my uh, position and I'll go to limit because market if I do this it will sell right away at the market if I do this I open up a sell order for $460.60 I click limit it I need to confirm if it close I'll make approximately a dollar fifty on that trade close order submitted so if I go to my open order, I can see I have my stop loss right here and I have my limit order right here. So I just let it there and I would wait. Like I said, I don't think I'll keep that trade because I don't know if it will be valid. Uh, what the heck? I'll let it go. Uh, it's just a dollar something if I if I it close negative. Uh, but but I hope you do understand why I consider this not a valid trade. Because right now I, we are on a downtrend on the 15 minute chart and I, I just opened up a long to go up. There's a good chance that it might go up. Like it could reverse at this point. I don't know. I have a good support line right here. So probably it touched and now it's going back up to reverse and it might go up to here um, to and then reverse again or, or keep going up. We don't know. So I'll keep the trade open and I'll see how it performs. So like I said, be careful. Leverage, don't use too high and don't take too much money from what you have available. I would recommend you to go at maximum 10%. I know if you've been watching a lot of trading video, most of the time on Forex or any stock market, they will recommend you to go at 1%. I would agree with that if you do have a lot of money uh, but in crypto if you're careful if you put your stop loss at the right place and you don't leverage too high you can go uh, at 10% uh, without any problem practice do some back testing if you want to try my strategy so give it a try and see how it's performing with you and if you see you're doing some back testing and you're getting good result try it with very small amount so try it with a $5 at 2x leverage and see if you can make profit. If you're gaining a little bit of money and you're making profit, well, try it a little bit higher. But that kind of strategy, expect to have maybe a 55% winning rate. Um, and anything above 50%, it's a very good strategy because your winning will be always bigger than your loss. So if you even if you would be 50-50, at the end, you'll still be in profit. So this is very important to be careful with the amount you're trading and try as much as possible to have a, a, a ratio of 1.3%. So I hope you did like this video. If it was the case, if you do like that kind of content, please leave me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, well, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any of my future video. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very soon on the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.